right. How's everybody doing? All right. Cool. So, uh, yeah, my name is David Wells. I'm a technical product manager here at Netlify. Uh, I'm here today to talk to you about uh, building to the future. So Netlify, the platform uh, we all know and love, is, is made up of these three components, build, dev, and edge. Dev is bringing the Netlify platform down onto your local machine and your local development environment. Build is connecting your Git repo, giving us your build command, and we'll set up that CI CD pipeline for you uh, and deploy whenever there's a commit. And then Edge is our distributed CDN that uh, puts your app or site uh, cl as close to the user as possible uh, to deliver the kind of fastest experience uh, to the user. Today, though, we're going to talk about uh, Netlify build and zoom in on that and look under the hood of how that uh, actually works when you give us your, your build command. So the life cycle of a build, uh, the build starts uh, when there's a commit or you push a button. Uh, the cache gets fetched. Um, and this is to optimize uh, from previous builds. Dependencies get installed, all of your NPM packages and what have you. Uh, your build command is then run. Serverless functions get built and deployed into AWS. The cache gets saved, to, again, to optimize future deployments and builds. The site gets deployed. And then we do post-processing optimization on your files, uh, shrinking images, processing forms, et cetera. And your site's live on the internet. So there's a lot of stuff happening under the hood when you actually connect your repo. And uh, you, know, you get this feeling when you use Netlify. I've been a Netlify user for, for many years before I j even joined the company. And this is the feeling I get. Uh, so looking at that life cycle, um, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on. That complexity is hidden under the hood. And really, the only place uh, you as a developer can access that right, right now is in the build commands, when the build commands are run. All these other steps are, are uh, basically behind the scenes, happening behind the scenes. And, and the build command is OK, uh, but it's really only one slice of the deployment lifecycle of that build lifecycle. And Matt kind of alluded to uh, some stuff earlier in his keynote uh, that we'll jump into. So this got us thinking. Like, what, what, you know, how could we extend this? How could we make this uh, a little bit better? You know, what if we want to customize how our dependencies are installed? What if we want to use TypeScript to bundle our functions? What if we want to run accessibility tests to ensure uh, we're, we're you know, compliant uh, before we actually push something live to production? So uh, today, I'm really happy to uh, introduce Netlify Build Plugins. Um, it's a, a new way to kind of extend your, your build. And we'll take a look at a demo in a second. So Netlify Build Plugins are a programmable way, uh, a programmable interface for your site build. Uh, they run both locally and inside of uh, the remote CI system. Uh, so they transform this into this. Uh, and how does that work? So uh, there's a build lifecycle uh, and plugins. Uh, the lifecycle exposes all those hooks that we've seen before. There's an open source repo. Um, the link's down there. I'm not going to go through these in the interest of time. In the lifecycle, you, you, you define the lifecycle inside of your Netlify configuration, which we'll take a look at. And you also can define plugins. Plugins are plain old JavaScript objects that run on a given lifecycle that you can do stuff to uh, uh, optimize your build. So let's actually jump into the demo. So uh, here I have a, a normal Netlify site um, that is just the static HTML. I have a uh, TOML file, uh, as we're all familiar with. But uh, with a new build system, I'm actually going to uh, duplicate this. And we're going to use YAML, because uh, we now support YAML. So let's actually uh, you know, add our build configuration in YAML. And what I can do is actually uh, run the Netlify build command locally um, and see that lifecycle in action. So uh, the, the lifecycle out of the box is you know, we build your site, we run your build command, and we build your serverless functions. But let's say we wanted to extend this lifecycle and actually uh, add functionality to that. So let's uh, you know, transform our, our command into uh, a lifecycle. So uh, 
instead of using the command block, I can use an inline lifecycle here where I'm saying, like, hey, on the init phase, run these commands. On the build, run these. On finally, run these. Again, there's a lot of different lifecycle hooks that you can uh, hook into and um, uh, run custom functionality. So if I run this, this is the plan command to actually dry run my build. So what we can see, if I save this file, is um, the, uh, let me get rid of this real quick. Live demos. So what we can see, if I run that uh, now, it's reading the, that YAML file. Uh, and uh, we see we have our, our lifecycle commands actually running uh, in, in that given order. So that's cool. We can extend the, the build lifecycle in many different ways before and after things happen. Uh, but let's actually uh, add a plugin. So maybe we want some prepackaged functionality uh, to, uh, to add to our site. Let's actually do that. So I'm going to uh, add a new uh, field here, which is the plugins field in your Netlify configuration file. Um, I'm defining a plugin. Uh, and this is a local plugin. Plugins can live locally in your projects, or they can be installed from NPM. Um, and they might take some config. Let's write a plugin real quick um, with the magic of autocomplete. So again, Plugins are just plain old JavaScript objects that you tell uh, Netlify what to run and when to run it. Um, and you export that. And we will um, go ahead and run that. So if I run this again, what we can see is we're now loading that plugin. And it's, it's running its, its uh, thing on the, the post build and what have you. If I actually run the build, we'll see it step through and run each command uh, in order. Uh, and execute our build, and then uh, tell us to have a nice day. That's, oh, that's so nice. Um, cool. So, so that's like uh, writing a plugin locally. Let's say we wanted to install a plugin from NPM. So what I can do is actually, uh, oops. I can, uh, I've already NPM installed this plugin from NPM, uh, but this is a sitemap plugin. What this will do is on the post build, we'll automatically read my build, uh, my built HTML files, and build a sitemap. So now that I've uh, installed that plugin, uh, I'm just going to run the dry command here. Uh, we can see on that post build step, the sitemap plugin is executing, uh, or will execute, and actually output a sitemap for us. Cool. So now uh, there we go. There's our build, and there's our new sitemap. Um, so that's, that's one example of what you could do with a build plugin. Uh, let's, do, uh, let's go one step further. So let's actually uh, uh, deploy and provision a third-party service, a third-party resource. Um, so what I've just done here is added one more plugin, and that's the serverless plugin. So this is using the serverless framework. Um, and it's going to deploy things into my own AWS account. <clears throat> so uh, I'll go back here and run this. The plugin's loaded. I can run the build command. So we're, we're pre-provisioning. Um, <laughs> live. Uh, interesting. All right. Um, <laughs> well, that's no good. Uh, let me save this. Make sure this is saved. Uh, I know what, what it is, demo. So my backend is, wasn't actually uh, added. So my backend files, my serverless uh, 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 backend code was not yet added. So let's go ahead and run that one more time. And as we can see here, now it's executing uh, another binary in our build, which is deploying our serverless function into uh, an AWS account. Uh, um, and if we go and look at that, it's actually provisioned a live API endpoint for us. Uh, hi, Jamstack. I've just been deployed with the Netlify plugin. Uh, we can join the beta uh, at this URL. Um, and yeah, so provisioning third-party resources or really anything you want to do is, is now possible in that build uh, lifecycle. One other thing to note here is um, the configuration here, uh, we're actually referencing environment variables. 
uh, with this new variable syntax in the configuration. So we no longer have to hard code secrets into our configuration. Uh, so that's kind of a new feature with this uh, build system. And that's it for kind of the live code demo. And I'm running dangerously low on time. So I'll go back into the slides, and we'll wrap up. So YAML, you get YAML, you get YAML, you get YAML. TOML is also supported. Also, uh, JSON is also supported. The build system is backwards compatible. So you can run it against your existing TOML file today. Um, and everything uh, should just work out of the box. Uh, but if you do want to use a, a different kind of syntax, you can. And those environment, uh, that environment variable support. So features, uh, it runs locally on your machine. So you can test stuff out before you deploy it into um, Netlify. You can also run this remotely. Um, it's extendable with the build lifecycle and plugins. Um, there's Im improved configuration support, monorepo support. We're working on, on this to make faster, more intelligent builds. Um, and really, this is, is adding a programmatic interface on top of your, the way that you build um, your sites um, to just kind of make that uh, easier to use. Some plugin examples, uh, you know, running integration tests with Cypress or, you know, building a notification plugin, uh, doing uh, performance testing with Lighthouse. Really, the sky's the limit, and we're really excited to see uh, what, what people uh, start uh, developing. Special thanks to the, like everyone who, who really made this possible on the team. Um, couldn't have done it without them. And, and you, like everyone here at JamstackConf, like really paving the way uh, on, on how people are building uh, stuff in this new way with the Jamstack, making things as fast as possible, especially for these new emerging markets uh, that Matt was talking about. Uh, we can't wait to see what you build. And you can, you can join the early access uh, beta program to actually get this up and running uh, on your local machine and inside of uh, your live Netlify sites uh, today. So thank you. <laughs>